Hello YouTube, this is uh, Dev Physics, and uh, I'll be posting a couple of videos on some few select topics of uh, statistical mechanics, and what the goal of these videos will be, will be to familiarize you with the very basics of uh, such things, for example, microstates and macrostates of the system. Uh, we'll be talking about Maxwell's velocity distribution. In fact, the next couple of videos we will try to develop the background in order to actually understand and appreciate uh, the, the kind of uh, the kind of things, for example, like Maxwell's and Boltzmann distribution functions. And in fact, we will also try to figure out what do we mean by ensemble concept and things like that. So the first video, in order to really understand Maxwell's distribution, will be to actually understand and figure out what do we ma mean by microstates and macrostates of a system, right? Because in, in fact it's very important to understand the two properties by which you can describe a physical system and if you don't understand them it's very difficult for you to actually understand uh, how do we go about solving the problem of uh, the the, the probability distributions of these uh, the different velocity distributions and so on and so forth. So let's try to figure this out first. Now suppose that you have a box of coins, right? So let me make a box here, a box of coins. And let's say there are a hundred coins in the box. So a box of hundred coins. So let me make the box right here. And this is the uh, this is the top view of the box, and the box is opened up, and uh, that's the box, and there are a bunch of coins in the box, right? These are not particles; these are simply coins, uh, which correspond to heads or tails. So let me actually color the coins which might correspond to heads or tails. So maybe this is tails, this is tails, I don't know, this is tails. So so something like that. And suppose that there are a hundred of them. Now, what you can do here is that you can describe the same system in two different ways, right? So we can describe this particular system in two different ways. This system in two ways. So let, let, let's think about what are the two possible ways that we can describe the system. Perhaps you might wonder that one way to describe the system is to actually go through each of the coins. Okay, so let's assume that all the coins are distinguishable. You have perhaps have marked all the coins one, two, three, and so on and so forth. So you can make a table. Okay, so that's the first way. So method one. Let's method one is to make a table. Make a table. Uh, make a table of all the possible arrangements. Uh, perhaps not the all the possible arrangements. Uh, we we shake this box randomly and we look at, at all the coins. And of co of course they will be arranged in different ways. Some coins will be heads. Some coins will be tails. So we can make this entire table and we can say, well, coin number one is heads. We can say coin number two is tails. And we can do this for a hundred coins, okay? So coin number hundred, I don't know, it's heads and so on and so forth. You can make this entire table and you can keep this aside, all right? So this is the giant table that we have constructed and apologize already for my handwriting and the kind of things that I'm doing here, I don't know. Anyway, so that's method one, all right? But what, what other way can you describe this entire system without making this big table, all right? The, the method two seems to be a little more easy, especially when you have a giant load of coins and it's very difficult to make these tables. So method two is in fact, you can simply tell me that how many coins are heads, are heads. Well, I don't know, Let, let's say 48 of them are heads. And how many are tails, okay? How many tails? So let's say 52, that's the only possible number. 52 of them are tails, and the total heads plus tails is gonna be equal to 100 coins in the box. 
So these are the two methods to actually describe the same system. And you can clearly see that the method one talks about the details of the arrangement of each and every coin. And it's telling us a little more information. In fact, it's telling us a great deal more information about the arrangement of the box. But at the same time, the problem with this method, you can clearly see, is that it's very huge. Okay, and suppose that you don't have a hundred coins, suppose that you have a thousand coins, it becomes very difficult to in fact mark all these coins and make this giant table and in fact talk about the great detail of each and every arrangement while you can simply talk about the method two, you only have to worry about two numbers. In fact, even if the coins increase to a billion, the only thing that you have to tell me are two numbers. So th that, that gives me a rough idea about the information that I'm getting. Of course, I'm not getting the entire information, but also I'm not getting nothing. I'm getting something out of this, this mess here, okay? So now let's, let's, uh, let, let's make an analogy to the atoms here. In thermodynamics, this method, all right, this method is called the microstate of the system. Of this system, all right? And this part here is known as the macro state of the system. Okay, now you can clearly see that why are they called micro state and macro state? Because this state is just telling us the overall picture of the system, it's not going into the detail. We are not taking a magnifying glass and looking at a billion coins. Uh, assuming that the coins are short, small enough to get into the box, they must be very small, and so we must be using a magnifying glass to actually look at them. So you, you can sort of imagine this analogy, uh, the, how it carries on to atoms and molecules. When we, when we say certain quantities, for example, like energy and the temperature of the system, we are basically talking about the average quantity. We're talking about the macro state of the system when we refer to such quantities. But when we, when we talk about the details of each and every molecule and what is the velocity that the molecule is traveling in, and we make a giant table of a trillion molecules, okay? We, we will make a table of 10 to the 23 molecules, and we will talk about each and every molecule. That corresponds to the microstate of the system, all right? So that is what we mean by macrostate and microstate of the system. So let's try to go in greater detail and try to understand how exactly if these two are related to each other, okay? So let me try to emphasize that. So again, going back to the coin example, if you look at the two numbers, suppose that I tell you, suppose I shake the box randomly, and I tell you that I have 52 and 48, okay, I give you this set of two numbers, and I tell you there are 52 heads and 48 tails. What can you tell about the system? I mean, how likely? Okay, so let's talk about how likely is it that the system is in this state, given that you randomly shake the box. How likely is it that you get this number? Okay, so we will not actually go into the detail of the probability calculation here, although you can do that, but we will try to go in a more intuitive sense. Suppose that you shake the box randomly. How likely is it that I give you the number one and 99 tails? How likely is this? Forget this. How likely is this? How likely? Suppose that you set up an experiment and you tell your assistant to shake the box. How likely is the assistant, suppose let's call him Bob. How likely is Bob gonna tell you that after randomly shaking this box, he gets one heads and 99 tails. How likely is it? Well, it's very unlikely, all right? It's, it's highly unlikely that there will be all 99 coins that are tails and only one single coin which is heads, okay? So it's highly unlikely. Now going back to this, how likely is a 50-50 arrangement? So let's just, um, how likely is a 50-50 arrangement? How likely is Bob gonna tell you that he has exactly 50 heads and exactly tails? Well, you can say that it's certainly more than that. It's, it's, it's much more than this. So let, let's say relatively 
more okay in fact it's a lot more than this okay if you actually calculate the probability now it turns out that the likeliness of something or, or a likeliness of the system to be in certain macro state so the likeliness I don't know I apologize for the spelling I really don't know the let's let's likeliness I don't know how it's spelled uh, of the system to be in a particular macro state depends upon the number of microstates corresponding to the given macrostate all right that makes a lot of sense if you look at it uh, in in some way some 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 detail that uh, suppose that you have a, a one head and 99 tails how many possible microstates can possibly be in? How, how many possible microstates can the system be in? Or in other words, how many tables, how many details tab detailed tables can you make given that this, mic this, this is the macrostate of the system? Well, you can clearly see that you can make 100 such tables, right? The first coin can be heads. The second coin can be heads and the rest of them tails. The third coin can be heads and the rest of them tails. And the hundred coin, hundredth coin can be heads and the rest of them tails. Okay, so 99 of them tails. All of these macro states, okay, all of these micro states, all of these tables, these are the tables. Uh, tables, these, these tables, there are hundred tables which correspond to the same micro state, uh, same, same macro state of the system. All right. However, when you look at this, how many tables can you make of this state? A lot more than this, right? Because you can have an alternative arrangement of heads and tails. You can have this kind of stuff, right? First coin can be heads and the second can be tails. Or you can flip these two and leave the rest of them like they are. So you, you can have certain something like this and the rest of them just carry on. Or you can flip these two and you can have something like something like this and you can keep flipping or in fact you can flip flip these two and again make a table or you can flip these two and you can you can do this activity so many so many times that you will get so many tables so many ma more tables as compared to the the hundred of these all right so that means that there are a lot more possible arrangements of the system corresponding to this particular macro state all right and that means that the system is more likely to be in this macro state as compared to this macro state, all right? So that is what we mean by saying that these two are in fact related to each other. That means that these, th each and every macro state corresponds to a giant amount of uh, micro states of the system, all right? So that, that was about macro state and micro state. I will talk about this in greater detail when we uh, in the, in the next video okay so thanks for thanks for your time do like and share and i'll be uploading more soon thank you very much